In this video, we're going to learn about the biological molecules, lipids. Lipids uh, take many forms, and one of the most common forms is the oils that we consume every day. And there are different types of oils and different, also different types of lipids, which are not oils. So we're going to um, learn about them. What are some functions that are provided by lipids? Um, lipids provide structural support to our uh, plasma membrane. So this is the um, lipid bilayer, the membrane that surrounds our cells and separates inside of the cell from the outside. And it is made of uh, phospholipid chains. And uh, this uh, membrane could be somewhat fluid sometimes that it needs structural integrity and one of the ways that structural integrity is maintained is by uh, these presence of these uh, cholesterol molecules. So cholesterol always seems like when we hear about it, it has a negative sentiment attached to it. But just like anything else, if you have too much of it, it's not good. But cholesterol is essential for maintaining the structural uh, rigidity, rigidity and integrity of the plasma membrane. Cholesterol is also used to make hormones. Uh, or lipids also provide a source of energy storage as oils. Um, lipids perform a very important function of insulation. For example, in this animal, a layer of oil on top of their skin uh, protects them from being too cold. We also have fat deposits, droplets. We have fat cells in our bodies that insulate our bodies, uh, provides a cushion for our organs, and insulates for uh, re retaining heat so we don't get too cold. Um, lipids also are source of very important uh, chemical messages and the chemical messengers and the way that cells interact with one another and also uh, lipids in the form of cholesterol uh, or a derivative of cholesterol are um, the source of uh, sex hormones. So both sex hormones and other hormones that derive our functions are all derivatives of cholesterol. So these are all different forms of lipids. Lipids are hydrophobic. Uh, that's why they don't mix with water. You've seen that when you mix oil and water, they pretty much don't mix. And that has a lot to do with the fact that lipids are uh, don't have a lot of um, polar or charged bonds or functional groups. You can see most of these bonds are pretty much hydrophobic. There's really not a whole lot of polar um, functional groups, just a few. So these, this is a molecule of cholesterol, which, uh, which is a, it's a lipid and steroid hormones are derived from cholesterol. And this is cortisol. That's a steroid hormone. Now, another form of lipids are fatty acids. Uh, why do they call them fatty acids? Because they have a long chain that is fatty. Why do we call it fatty? Because it's, they're very hydrophobic. Look, there are really no polar or charged functional groups or bonds in here. So there's really no opportunity for hydrogen bonding with water. But at one end, there is a carboxyl functional group which if you remember from our discussion from functional groups, they are acidic. So that's why they call it fatty acid. And you notice there are two different types of fatty acids, saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. Why do we call these saturated? Because carbon in these long chains are forming four separate bonds. One, two, three, four. Carbon can make a maximum of four bonds and uh, carbon is making all those. So there's four separate bonds. In an unsaturated fatty acid, carbon is not making bonds with 
four separate entities. So in here, this carbon is making one bond with this hydrogen, one bond with this carbon, but a double bond with a carbon next to it. So therefore it is not saturated. And the way you would make an unsaturated fatty acid saturated is by adding hydrogen in here and turning this bond into something like this. Now we talked about um, isomers when we, when we covered hydrocarbons. And remember we said that for double bonds, we can have two configurations, cis and trans. So this is oleic acid. We have a cis form and a trans form. And why do we call this cis? Because hydrogen, hydrogens are on one side of this double bond. But in this case, hydrogens are on opposite sides. On the face of it, if you weren't to going to look at the structure of these molecules, it wouldn't be a big deal. So what? You're changing the sides, but actually it makes a huge difference, which has a huge consequences in the properties of fatty acids. With cis oleic acid, this is bent, which makes the molecule a little less rigid. With trans fatty acids, this is a straight line. Now, uh, you may have heard that trans fats aren't good for you, and they are not. They can give rise to heart disease, and every time, and I don't mean to ruin french fries for you, but if you buy french fries from fast food uh, places where they keep reusing the same oil, they don't change their oil, so they have these big buckets of oil, and they keep heating it at a really high temperature, and they keep making uh, batches and batches of of french fries. So during that process, they start with an oily substance, which is liquid, liquid oil. But as you heat that oil for a very long time, eventually this cis structure turns into a trans structure. So you're turning cis fat into trans fat. And that's why it's not a good idea to use used oil. Once you use liquid oil, one time, just don't use it to fry your eggs or whatever you're doing. Uh, omega fatty acids are another separate class of lipids, uh, which are very important for our health and our bodies do not make them. That's why we need to consume them in our diet. And this is why eating fish, which is a good source of omega acid is, is beneficial. Another class of lipids are triglycerides. And triglycerides have two building blocks. One is a glycerol molecule, and the other is a fatty acid. So what happens, you take a glycerol. Glycerol has three hydroxyl functional groups in here, and you attach covalently bond one fatty acid of the, to th all three of these hydroxyl groups. So you get a triglycerol. So you have one, two, and three. Tri means three. So you have three fatty acids attached to the glycerol. Now a question for you, what kind of a reaction is this? going from this just the attachment of fatty acids to one of these hydroxyls. What kind of reaction is that? And come to discussion and let's discuss it. So back to saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Remember that I said having an unsaturated bond makes the molecule kink and it makes the molecule more fluid. So in a saturated fatty acid or triglycerol, um, all these fatty acid chains are kind of packed against one another. And they're all hydrophobic. They all don't interact with water. So they interact, they pack together based on a force called the hydrophobic interaction. And basically it's a consequence of the fact that these chains just don't interact with water. So they kind of uh, huddle together. And this makes for a very solid structure, a solid non-liquid structure. With unsaturated fatty acids, 
you see that there are kinks form in these legs and this prevents these long chains to huddle together by hydrophobic interaction so therefore they cannot pack like this they're more liquid so what does that look like in real life well let's take a look if you have a cooking vegetable oil which we buy in a bottle that's liquid form is that saturated or unsaturated that's unsaturated because because of those kinks avocado oil avocado oil if you've ever seen it in in uh, in the stores it's liquid peanut butter well i say it depends because it depends what brand you buy uh, most of popular peanut butter brands they are solid so you open up the can and you start spreading your peanut butter like butter but if you buy the good kind the healthy kind you will notice that there is a layer of oil collecting on top of this paste why is it the good kind because the peanut butter that has the oil on top of it has not been hydrogenated it's not processed so if you buy a peanut butter where you don't see that oil on the type this is processed food they've add hydrogens to those um, unsaturated bonds in peanut butter so that you don't have to deal with this oil mixing this oil which is which kind of takes a little bit of muscle but it is worth it so the food industry wants to make it easy for you to eat peanut butter but actually they're not really doing you a favor so it is worth taking the effort of mixing this oil on the top with the paste because you'd be eating more healthy peanut butter uh, butter animal which is animal fat is saturated and uh, fish has omega fatty acids now phospholipids of a are a variation of lipids which are very very important and play an absolute essential role in making cells cells so what is a phospholipid well it's that glycerol molecule but instead of being attached to three fatty acids, it's attached to two fatty acids. And the third hydroxyl group on glycerol is bonded to a phosphate functional group. And this is illustrated in here. So this phosphate head is shown as this big, big red circle. And then the fatty acids are shown as legs. And one of them is kinked because it has a double bond now this and this is another form this is a ball and stick model of showing the same thing and this gives phospholipids a very interesting property in that they are both hydrophilic and hydrophobic their tails are hydrophobic and their heads are hydrophilic so what does that mean that means this molecule can interact with water but it has to interact what it has to interact in a specific it can exist in a specific way and the way it can exist in water is by forming micelles meaning these phospholipids would come and then interact through their hydrophobic tails and leaving the hydrophilic heads outside to interact with water so a simplified way of drawing this phospholipid is like this. You have the hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. And why did I say it's important for making cells what they are? Because, well, our plasma membrane, the membrane that surrounds our cells, is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. There are two rows of these phospholipids, one on top, one on bottom. And you could kind of uh, guess or just for now assume that the top it's outside of the cell and the bottom is inside and in both outside and inside of the cell there's plenty of water molecules so therefore these hydrophilic heads are going to hydrogen bond with molecules of water and then these hydrophobic 
interior, they turn toward each other and are held together by a hydrophobic interaction. So that makes a really nice barrier around our cells. And these are the hydrophobic tails inside. And if you get enough of phospholipids inside a tube, actually they spontaneously form these circles. A hollow circles and you can imagine that uh, because of their property early on during the evolution of life you can imagine how easy it would have been to to make a hollow structure and if it trapped stuff in here over many years of evolution you could have it, it's easy to imagine how cells were um, formed now there is a very, very interesting video in here that I wanted to show you. Okay, so this asks, how does self work, uh, soap work? So this is soap. And then these are the phospholipid molecules in soap. You see the hydrophobic tail and hydrophilic head. So when you put soap into water, what happens? They form structures called micelles, and it happens when these phospholipids come together. So right now they're kind of sitting on the, this is the soap, they're sitting on the surface of the water, and the hydrophilic heads are pointing towards water, and this is towards the soap itself. And when you, when you dissolve it in water, then they form these micelles. So all these hydrophobic tails are hanging around each other. Now, how does soap get rid of fat? So if you have a surface that had dirty oil stuff in it, stains in it, what happens, these micelles are going to come, if this is the fat molecule, they're gonna come and grab this fat because they all like each other hydrophobic interaction and then when you put water and rinse the soap out this soap is going to remove these stains so that's why you can clean your dishes using soap and this is also why soap is such an effective mechanism for washing your hands to protect yourself from bacteria and viruses so wash your hands to protect yourself from coronavirus in addition to wearing a mask and keeping your social distance. So answer this question and come to discussion to check your answer.